Welcome to everyone again to the ANH Fridays. Today we will have our common technical workshops that's called Invitation to Nominate Areas into 2022 ANH Technical Talks. Today we will have the presentation by the UPTC, Universidad Pedagógica y Tecnológica de Colombia, with their presentations about hydrocarbon perspectivity in the northern part of the Middle Magdalena Basin and the Star Rancheria Basin. So, as an exercise of what we, we have been doing into these talks, I would like to mention that in the last talks uh, that we made into the 4th of February, uh, the ANH have a brief presentation about the Pacific projects that we will be carrying out. Secondly, uh, Lina Maria Serna, one of the interpreters from the ANH, presented the seismic program that's what, that was acquired into the BIM 40 that was called Bosconia Norte. <clears throat> and afterwards, um, Arlex Gutierrez presented Ataraya Field into the Llanos Basin, exactly into the block CPO 71. We have a total attendees of 147. Most of them were local. We have 130 attendees and we have 34 uh, people from the overseas or foreigners. And a total of total operator companies of 41. We can see here people where they're representing each of the countries. So today, 11th of February, we have the presentation, as I mentioned before, the UPTC University with the workshop number two that is called Hydrocarbon Perspectivity in the Northern Part of the Middle Magdalena Basin and Cesar Rancheria. Next week, the 18th of February, we will have a University of Caldas with the Hydrocarbon Perspectivity in the Southern Part of the Middle Magdalena Basin. And into the 25th of February, we will have the presentation of the seismic program that was acquired in Las Mercedes in the Catatumbo Basin, nearby to Tibu, and as well, we have the presentation to all of the people that's interested in nominated areas of Morichito into the Llanos Basin. So those are the couple of areas that were presented into the first workshop last week. We have here the BIM 40 nearby or at the edge into the basin of the Lower Magdalena and Cesar Rancheria. So we were interested in to acquire a seismic program that's called Bosconia Norte, that the idea was to join different programs or to understand, or to understand how is the change between the Lower Magdalena and the Cesar Rancheria into this area nearby to the difficile, el difficile field. And here we got into the Janus Basin, an area that was presented that's called Atarraya, that was a field that most of the wells from the Atarraya were drilled by Tech Petrol at the moment. So we got here CPO 71, that both of those areas, remember, were presented last week. So today, uh, as part of the UPTC project or presentation, we will be presenting for the people that are interested in the nominated areas, the Middle Magdalena Basin Valley, the 27-1, 33-2, and 33-1. Both uh, the three of them are prospective areas that got uh, prospectivity into the basal, tertiary, and Cretaceous rocks. Here you can see the different blocks that have been uh, that are in exploration and production into this very moment. We got Bolivar, we got Barranca Lebrija, Fortuna, Miras, Tisquirama, and La Paloma. Next one. We will be presenting the same one, uh, Middle Magdalena 27-1, 33-2, and 33-1. But those are the fields that are in this very moment into production. So these are the facilities or the infrastructure that we got, that we got all the pipelines and gas, uh, gas lines from the Ayacucho into nearby to the BMM 33-1. And at the south, uh, we got Cantagallo Yariri. Now, I will be present. Uh, I will be giving the CV of each of the people that will be presenting today with the UPTC. We have Enrique Velázquez. That Enrique is graduated as geologist from the National University of Colombia, Universidad Nacional de Colombia. 
He got a business administration degree at the Escuela de Administración de Negocios. He has more than 50 years of experience working for companies as Texaco, ExxonMobil, Cipetrol, Ocol, Oxy, Ecopetrol, Geopark, and Hunt Oil. He held the position of International Exploration Manager and Exploration Vice President of Ecopetrol. Recently, he has been working as Director of Geological Integration Project with universities for the ENH. He also was professor in several Colombian universities. Germán Bayona, he graduated as geologist from the Universidad Nacional de Colombia in 1992, got a master's degree at New Mexico State University in 1998, and his PhD at the University of Kentucky in 2003. His research includes a comprehensive analysis of continental sinorogenic strata, geometric and cinematic evolution of the adjacent orogenic belts, and applications of paleomagnetic techniques for tectonic, structural, and stratigraphic studies. We got as well Gustavo Montenegro, which is a geologist and senior seismic interpreter with more than 23 years of experience in integrated reservoir characterization, revitalization of, of major fields, and evaluation of exploration opportunities in different basins in Colombia and Latin America. He's an expert in structural analysis. And at the end, but not least, we got Patricia Chahin. She's a geologist, graduated from Universidad Industrial de Santander with a master's degree in geology from the same university. She has 13 years of experience into the hydrocarbon industry and has worked for several companies in the oil sector in Colombia, including seven years of Ecopetrol. She has been a professor at the WIS. Currently, she works as a consultant in the area of geochemical interpretation and petroleum system modeling. Now I give the stage to the, to the group from the Universidad Pedagógica y Tecnológica de Colombia. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Herman, could you please share your, your presentation in order to start it? And then the next one. Okay, okay. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of the UPTC and the ANH, <clears throat> uh, I, I, I would like to present the, the work titled Geological Integration, Petroleum System Evaluation and Prospectivity of Colombia Frontier Basins, Norer Milo Magdalena and Cesar, Cesar Rancheria. <clears throat> but before um, to start, I would like to clarify, but, uh, because Daniel said, that I have more than 50 years of experience. Actually, it's 40, but I thank you, Daniel. <laughs> anyway, okay, this is a multidisciplinary team, <clears throat> which I, I had the, 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 the luck to direct it. Uh, we have uh, uh, the coordination, Aliasson from the UBTC, from Professor Carlos Julio Rodriguez. Uh, the the GIS uh, guy was Oscar Rodriguez, data manager, Sonia Ponguta. <clears throat> Uh, the leader of stratigraphy, Germán Bayona and Maria Alejandra Hoya, petrophysicist, Germán Bonilla, a structural geologist, Martín Morales, seismic interpretation was led by Gustavo Montenegro, and also Angela Navarrete, Paula Arcila, and Catherine Jaimes participate in that. In the petroleum systems and um, play favor maps, Cesar Mora led the team composed by Claudia Posada, Catalina Niño, Patricia Chahin and Christian Peñafor. Also, we have the collaboration of Carlos Rojas, uh, a, a geologist. <clears throat> uh, and the supervisor for ANH was our, our colleague, Maria Cecilia Ruiz. Uh, next, Herman. Uh, thank you. Mm, the way that, uh, mm, that we prepared the, the presentation we have a, a Herman Bayona will lead a stratigraphy, seismic interpretation, and a structural framework. Uh, we will conduct it by Gustavo Montenegro, petroleum systems, play fairway maps, and yet to find by Patricia Chahin. And I will complete a wrap up and the end of the presentation. <clears throat> uh, before I invite Herman to start talking about a stratigraphy of the area. I would like to thank the UPTC as well as the ANH for the opportunity to direct this project, which blends 
the academic rigorosity of the university with the pragmatism of the industry. You will see in a few minutes how these this kind of projects with this blend of extraordinary people can produce this I mean, piece of work. So thank you very much for you guys for attending uh, this uh, presentation today. And um, Herman, uh, go ahead. Thank you very much, Enrique, and um, good morning, everyone. So here is uh, basically an outline of my presentation that we are going through, basically to understand what is the, the spatial and temporal distribution of the units in these two areas. Basically, we are going to talk about all the northern uh, Middle Magdalena Basin, Cesar Arracharia. These basins are presently an intermountain basins that are bounded from north to south by the Oca Fault, Algaborro Fault System, Espiritu Santo Mejia Fault, and Cimitar Fault. To the west, what we have here in blue are plutonic and volcanoclastic deposits of lower and middle Jurassic age. And they are going to be part of the economic basement that are beneath of this basin that we're going to talk about. Look that there are no faults at the borders because basically these major massifs are tilted toward the east. In contrast, on the east, what we have for the Northern Magdalena Basin, the Bucaramanga Fault System that are placed in Precambrian, Paleozoic, and Triassic, lowermost uh, 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 plutonic as on volcanoclastic deposits, and that are overlain unconformably by Upper Jurassic Hero uh, Formation that is a sedimentary unit. Here to the north, what we have also in blue are the volcanoclastic system of the La Quinta formation that is from the uppermost Triassic to the middle Jurassic in age. These units here also constitute the economic basin toward this part of the basin. For the anomal uh, poker anomaly, what we have here is the positive anomaly of the Sierra Nevada Santa Marta, but look how changes through the south to the area where we are going to have the thickest uh, deposition of Jurassic, Cretaceous, and Cenozoic units here in the Northern Magdalena uh, Basin. What also we, we want to make a reference is that we here, we have the interplay of several subduction slabs, not only the Nazca slab, but also the Caribbean slab. So it's a very complex area. So we, we need to understand how is the tectonic evolution. In order to do that, we, we did an analysis of a total of 87 points controlled between surface and wells, and that includes 21 NH wells that carry that they were called recently with a core description, sedimentological, biostratigraphic, biostratigraphic analysis, mostly in the Cesar uh, Rancheri, Rancheria and the north, northernmost Middle Magdalena Basin. So for each area, we use the structural cross section with the site interpretation, and we projected the wells here in order to create the chronostratigraphic framework in trying to understand how in time is the distribution of the sedimentary units. Here is an example of one of the transects for the Cesar Basin, when we show how is the change in time from the continental in orange to more carbonate car uh, calcareous systems of the Cretaceous here in dark blue with some interpets of some CDC classic that is in light blue going to an anosic marine system that is La Luna formation. And here, what we are showing in, in, in white are the stratigraphic gaps. Then moving up section, again, to the siliciclastic and calcareous, uh, the Molino, all the Cologne formation, going up section here to the continental system in the 
Paleocene of the core bearing units of the Serrejón Cuervo Formation and more the continental uh, father in the Eocene and Oligocene system. For the Northern Middle Magdalena, we are going to show an example here for the southernmost section that goes from the CMT area to the, this area of the Santander Massif. And um, it crosses several important fields and wells, like a, for example, Soe Itoka, that they are wells that we, we use for reference to construct this uh, cross-stratigraphic chart. And look also the variation. Here, what we have is the change from more marginal to marine deposits in the lowermost uh, Jurassic. And basically here, what dominates are most the siliciclastic system and the calcareous system is going to be adjacent to the structural uplifts. Then the system changed to this anosic system of La Luna formation that is bounded to above and below, but the stratigraphic gaps. And then we have the change for the Umir formation and the transitional change to the Lisama formation in a marginal system going then to continental. We have a great gap here related to an angular unconformity and a period of deformation previous to the accumulation in this area of the uppermost uh, Eocene strata or the Esmeraldas Mugrosa Colorado system associated with development of some fouls both internally and above the margin, and then going to the accumulation of the real group in the late Mayo, in the late Miocene. So also, we the understanding how the temporal distribution, we were as with the cross section, we were able to reconstruct how was the geometry of the basin for each interval design. So to make a difference, for example, for the Northern Middle Magdalene Basin, look that is a graph and both by faults here for the Cretaceous in the Eastern uh, border, whereas for the Cesar, the basin is dipping toward the East, getting more thicker deposits. So if there is a change in the constitution of the, of the basin, so the same exercise we did for the other intervals of time. Finally, we are getting for the both basins um, chronostratigraphic framework here for the southern part, here for the northern part. Look that there are significant differences in the this part of the northern Magdalena basin. We cannot we, we can conclude that there is no uh, even a blanket that covered all the area at one time. So, for example, here in the northern part, to, to get real deposits overlying the La Luna formation, a La Luna formation overlying even the economic basement. And this uh, structural height is surrounded by these depot centers with uh, car carbonate deposit at both areas, but no record in the Cenozoic. This is very different to the, to the, the stratigraphic record that as I showed you previously. Here is the tectonic evolution in a very schematic diagram for both basins. Look that it dominates the extensional tectonics during the early Cretaceous time, moving to a more uh, reduction of the tectonism here for the middle Magdalena. Yeah, but uh, still uh, at this border, at the eastern side, you have some faults, whereas in the, in the Cesar Rancheria, is still we have a uh, sun uh, more uh, thickening to the to the east. In opposite, during the latest Cretaceous to Paleocene, it changes because we have now the collision of the Caribbean plate, the uh, the uh, correction of the terrain, and that causes the the crustal tilting of the western margin of the South America, and um, in both areas. So this crustal tilting generates uh, this kind of depot centers in both areas that are bounded to the east by faults that are basically reactivated during this time, creating two source areas now, source areas to the east, source areas to the west in both areas. In the middle level scene is when we have a period of a very strong deformation 
and very subtle accumulation here in the middle, in the northern middle Magdalena, very, very, very uh, few areas, whereas in Cesar Rancheria, there is no record even for this time. It's only in the latest Eocene that we have still the reactivation of these structures, but here the development and the uplift of this area today is create the accumulation space to accumulate now very important deposits in both flanks of this structure. Um, basically, the, here is the operational unit La Paz and Esmeraldas formation that then are overlain by the system of the Mugrosa and Colorado. Sometimes this fault system migrates eastward, is, sorry, westward, and we have some reactivation here, here in internal angular conformities during in this system. Finally, during the latest, uh, middle, latest uh, Miocene, we have a strong uplift here, and we generate the accommodation space for the accommodation of the real group. At this time, is then really we have the accumulation here in the Cesar Rancheria, and this deposits several times overlaid even the Paleocene or the Cretaceous units. Now, we need, in order to understand how is the paleogeographic distribution, we have to look at and understand how is the system in a palispasi restoration. And here we are using the, the work of Montes et al. In, in order to understand, for example, for the Albion time, we have three systems that with this classic to the easternmost in the Janus Basin. The, there is an internal uplift also here that is correspond to the Santander Massif. And around, we are going to be uh, a misset carbonate and uh, silicic plastic. It's going to be more carbonate here, and more silicic plastic to the south. And further to the west, where we are going to have the development of the nearly calcareous system in the San Lucas area. This system changes in the Paleocene time because we have the subduction of the Caribbean plate. We have the tilting and creation of the uh, uplift area in this area uh, to the west, the reactivation structure to the east, and we are going to have an accumulation that is more a, a sandy to the south, more muddy sandy in the middle, and going to more cold and muddy to the to the north, and even getting to the to the uh, marine shallow marine systems. Now we are going to show how the distribution in the present position. Those these are not paleogeographic maps. These are really the interface distribution in present position of the system. So for the for the Cretaceous, what we are getting here is basically for the Northern Magdalena Basin, the uplifted areas with accumulation of the carbonate and silicic classics. And in the middle, in the Cesar Rancheria is moving toward more carbonates in this area. If we move now for the Paleocene, this is the other example. We have the uplifted area, the tilted margin to the west here in both areas the fault system to the east and in the middle we are going to have basically marginal deposits that is constituted here the Umiri and Lizama in this part and this is going to be part of the Colon and the Paleocene units the Cuervos and Cerrejon. Then in the late Eocene when we have the after the this uh, the strong deformation, we have a still some residual uplifts and accumulation of both margins that constitute the Esmeralda formation, one of the most important reservoir units. So basically in conclusion, we were able to establish this relationship between the temporal and spatial variation of the unit. And now we need to relate that to the petroleum system that is what then Patricia is going to show at the end. But here we have just to remember that there are so many variations internally between the stratigraphic levels that, for example, for the Cretaceous unit, we can have for the same unit, La, La Luna, El Salto, even reservoirs, rocks, seal rocks. And you know that the La Luna is one of the most important salt rocks in this area. So we have seal, salts, and reservoirs in, in units here. The same for the Tablazo and the same for the Aguas Blancas. Similar for the Paleocene uh, system, 
we can cut for the same unit even important reservoir levels as intraformational seals. And even for example, in consideration that uh, the, the coal systems are also a source for the gas uh, methane uh, in, this, in this area. So with this message, I want to, to give the, the, the continuity to Gustavo. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Herman. Gustavo, could you please, Gustavo, share the, the screen? Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Gustavo, you have the, the microphone off. Gus, prende el prende tu, tu micrófono, por favor. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I left my microphone, my microphone off. Okay, thank you, Enrique, and thank you, Herman. Uh, we are going to present in the next minutes a uh, uh, very brief results of the seismic interpretation and the structural configuration uh, sections that uh, the team uh, did about uh, those uh, frontier basin. At the beginning, when uh, a team like uh, UPTC uh, team face on frontera basin, uh, the understanding is that there are not much information and there are not much uh, successful example. And uh, the, the target of this kind of analysis is how to reduce the risks that uh, exploration company uh, face when they uh, try to get uh, some results in this kind of, of uh, basin. So the only way to do is to get an integrated workflow as we are shown here. And it's important that all the results that we are presenting here is the results of integration with the other teams. Very important to define, the to reduce the risks and to define which uh, prospectivity, real prospectivity we can find here. And it's amazing that uh, uh, we, we, for sure, we, we find uh, very good results. Uh, the structural, petrophysical, seismic interpretation, petroleum system modeling, and uh, the data management, which is important uh, to be able to work very easily. Uh, we are showing the, the whole information in terms of well and safe and seismic information that we uh, get as a team to understand what we are going to see. Uh, at the beginning, uh, we separate Cesar and Rancheria Basin in two. At the end, we decide to, to tie both of, of this basin and the results we are going to show as one, uh, as one uh, only one uh, basin. Let me show you. Uh, okay, so this is a rancheria area, rancheria basin, with three different families of uh, trust uh, fold system, mostly north, northwest, and northeast orientation, and some normal fold in the west area of the basin. And uh, uh, we are referring to the monocline uh, tilted to the east, as, as we are seeing in the map, uh, the, the center of the area in this, this part of, of the basin. And a couple of wells have results, Molinero, uh, sorry, Molino, with some uh, show uh, of uh, gas in the area, but not much that uh, couple of wells. Uh, in Cesar Basin, it's very interesting. Uh, we can see the configuration of the fall on the basement structural map, economic basement, because as you hear, uh, Herman, we are talking about the Jurassic basement, which is also sedimentary rocks. Uh, but uh, you can see some uh, of the configuration of the falls. The Cesar fault system, uh, which is in this line, Northeast orientation, uh, make the different configuration of the folds to the west area and to the east area. The depot center is located to the east area, as you see here in purple color. 
and uh, the fall in the east area can continue and can tie with the uh, rancheria uh, basin or rancheria area. The configuration of the fall here in a Atillo fall system are very different. Uh, are, looks like and actually uh, we interpret it as a strike slip area with uh, falls, reverse falls uh, with uh, some uh, horizontal movement. And it's important to establish that uh, we define two different structural provinces here in Cesar Rancheria to the east of Cesar Fall System and to the west of Cesar Fall System. Also in the, in the base map, structural map of uh, uh, northern part of uh, uh, Magdalena, northern of uh, uh, Magdalena Basin, we can also see two different uh, structural configuration in the very north, uh, north south configuration of falls that uh, allows the basement oak crops and the activity of those falls are along the whole history of evolution of the basin as we are going to see in the, in the maps, in the other maps of configuration. And the structural province in the south, we are seeing thrust fall uh, with northeast orientation, but the south area here in the south, in the depot center, uh, we can define a, as a monocline uh, tilted to the east area. The south area have those falls with very high level of frog and deformation, especially in pre-Eocene sequences. So we define clearly, structurally talking, two different provinces here also in Magdalena, and it can affect uh, the concept of the conceptualization for the exploration in, in those areas. First, before to see uh, the structural configuration, uh, we mentioned that the, uh, the team made more than six uh, structural sections and reconstruction of some of them uh, to try to understand how the, the folds uh, fix each other and, and the edge of the movement of those folds, we are showing uh, two of the most important in Cesar Rancheria area, which is a component lines, seismic lines interpretation. This is the Cesar system fold, and this is a Atillo system fold. And here in the south, uh, we can see the structural configuration uh, of uh, what the result in our seismic interpretation. And it's very interesting, we are going to see, uh, as uh, Herman was mentioned at the beginning in the very bottom of the Cretaceous development in a plant platform, we can see in green colors, um, Rosa Blanca, Tablazo, and La Luna formation with the thickness of the sequences are um, very consequent and along the whole, the whole area. And just to the, to the east of the area, uh, the folds of this area are affected, but very recently you see the thickness of the sequences here in this part. So this is the structural section, just an example of what we did. And now we are going to show uh, what we got in, in the north, very north of Magdalena area. This is a, a, a seismic information as you're seeing here in yellow. And this is the interpretation for these, uh, for these lines. As we, uh, as we mentioned, uh, the folds in this area are very vertical and involved basement. And eventually we are talking about some uh, old folds in the Jurassic Triassic, uh, Triassic conformation of the structural during uh, those age are reactivating as reverse folds and the different uh, uh, edge of, of the evolution. And we see in the center of the area, a highest part of the basement. And in both sides, the um, Cretaceous rock was development uh, with some differentiation of the thickness, what uh, we are going to see in the south. And this configuration is present during the whole uh, evolution of the basin, as we are mentioned, during during the um, Cenozoic 
uh, sequences uh, is important because uh, the uplift of this area constantly uh, make the configuration of the solder area. This is our section for the south, and we are seeing the location of the seismic line. And it's uh, very interesting, again, what we are talking about, about the bottom of Cretaceous, uh, the position, the sequences K1 uh, and K2 until La Luna formation, we got uh, very, um, the, 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 the configuration of the thickness of the sequences is very constant al along the whole sequence. And eventually at the end of the Cretaceous during the formation and Lisama the position, we are going to see the, the wedge that uh, conform those units uh, with the thicker to the east. Uh, um, and this is affected by the continuous uh, uplift of the central cordillera as uh, Herman was mentioned. And something important is uh, to highlight the differentiation between the kind of folds, even that we are talking about uh, uh, reverse folds. Uh, you can see the drug and the formation of the sequences of those folds. In blue, we define an area in which uh, we establish that there are the first uh, the formation uh, uh, edge of the, of the sequences. And as a result of the continued uplift and uh, tectonic activity in the basin, to the east is going to develop the next uh, thrust fall with the uh, with uh, a different uh, condition, different emergency. And uh, in the very east part, we still can have or can get some of this fall with not very high throw between. Uh, uh, the, the both sides of the fall. So this is the, the first development uh, falls in the area. This is the second one, but even though uh, it's clearly with this example uh, that we use the Toka and Soe wells that Herman was mentioned, a wedge of uh, sedimentary areas that conform the uh, Esmeralda and Mugrosa sequences, even folding for the for the activity of the main folds, so those wedges uh, are part of what we call a uh, option to to describe new uh, opportunities to explore in the area. But also uh, in Colorado, Colorado formation fossilizes the the whole deformation are are folding just because the reactivation of the eastern fold regarding with the uplift of, of the uh, eastern cordillera. So as a result of that, uh, we have been interpreted a lot of sequences, a lot of top of formation that we can tie with wells, as we are seeing here, um, um, Rosa Blanca, tab eh, Tablazo, uh, CMT, La Luna, all these sequences. And we tie um, and as uh, 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 stratigraphic sequences defined by the team, like K1, K2, K3. And we are seeing here the structural configuration of those, uh, the top of those sequences. Again, the economic basement, but also the CMT, the top of CMT formation, which, which is the top of uh, the K1 sequences, and remain to the south, uh, the main deposition is still having the depocenter in the south, but in the north part uh, of the area, as well as La Luna and Mir, the uplift of the basement during, during this uh, edge um, just uh, uh, permit that the sequences are go. Uh, coming thicker to the southeast. And then uh, Lisama and Esmeralda. Lisama still have some nonconformities affected by the, the main falls in the area, but then uh, Esmeralda and Colorado uh, formation are uh, covering the, 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 the whole deformation, just having some folding as we are seeing in the maps and uh, keeping the depot, the depot center of the the deeper part of, of the sequences in the southeast. 
uh, the kind of potential prospectivity structure and configuration, we are seeing here some example of successful uh, fields or wells that got uh, uh, oil or gas in the basin. And we are seeing, for instance, uh, Morales, which is one of the East uh, good results or at least show some, some uh, activity, some prospectivity. The kind of configuration uh, is like it's showing here. And you can see over this uh, the, the format area, the wedges that we are talking, not just in this area, the stratigraphic traps that we can find around the, the, the kind of structure like this one. Uh, we got uh, as a referent the La Luna formation and it's, and it's showing uh, those stratigraphic sun lab configuration over the Lisama formation that eventually can have some uh, opportunities for the future. And it's important also to, to, to mention that uh, we have even, even a very old uh, field, Buturama, still have the, uh, or allow us to keep in mind that there are plenty of opportunities to explore in terms of natural fractal reservoir in these structural provinces mainly. As we are seeing, their structural deformation for Cretaceous rocks uh, was tested and also was produced by Puturama. And even in the recently uh, times, uh, Kagui was one, another example of exploration, uh, thinking in natural fractal reservoirs. In terms of uh, what uh, we see in Cesar, Basin, we are seeing, see, uh, we are seeing here the, the, the configuration of uh, La Luna formation. And uh, we related here some discoveries or some proof that there are uh, mostly gas in the area. And this is the kind of configuration for the north area, the, the, the final configuration of the Cesar fault system. And we got in the north, the Verdesia high, and uh, in the east area, the Atillo configuration of, of the falls. And in south, we are tying the Bosconian and Compae. Compae is the, one of the big and interesting well to use in this analysis uh, because uh, show some, some gas results. At the end, as we are seeing here, this area, which is highly deformed by the strike slip and reverse uh, uh, composition of the fault, uh, has had some information about that we can expect it, thinking in terms of natural fractal reservoir, we can expect it to have some uh, new results because all those wells was really uh, thinking in conventional uh, uh, reservoirs. This is, uh, the resume as a resume, uh, the structural maps of the sequences that was interpreted in, in Cesar Rancheria Basin. Uh, we left a, a line in which we separate two different provinces and it's very clearly to see why we define two different uh, provinces, uh, structural provinces in whole maps. And the unconformity activities is uh, very important in the Xenozoic rocks as we are shown here. So uh, as a resume, uh, again, we define different provincial structural provinces uh, inside both uh, areas, both basins, Cesar Rancheria and north of uh, middle uh, Magdalena Basin. And uh, those, those, both of those uh, need to be um, explored with different eyes. Because even that in the in the south of uh, northern part of Magdalena Basin, we can see those wedges or uh, conventional exploration opportunities. Uh, we really think that in terms of natural fractal reservoir, there are a huge amount of discovery for coming in the near future when the company uh, changed the setup of configuration of point of view to see those uh, basins. So. Uh, now we are going to see what uh, is the results in, in uh, the petroleum system modeling and how tied with all of this that uh, we are seeing uh, until now. 
Okay, thank you, Gustavo. Uh, okay, please stop sharing the screen. Uh, Patricia, good morning. Please share uh, your screen. Good morning, everyone. Okay, go ahead. Listo, Pati, arranca. Estamos listos, la pantalla está viendo bien. Okay, good morning, everyone. I will talk about petroleum systems modeling, play fairway maps, and yet to find evaluation in the northern middle Magdalena Valley and Cesar Rancheria basins. The team who works in this project is Cesar Mora, Claudia Posada, Maria Catalina Niño, Christian Peñafort, and I. At first, in the Northern Middle Magdalena Valley Basin and Cesar Rancheria work uh, for this project, we include all the information about stratigraphy, paleogeography, and tectonic sequences from the basin productivity data, uh, which increase the detail that was included in the petroleum system 3D modeling. Uh, we built the thermal maturity maps for the two identified intervals for Tablazo and La Luna formations in this part of the middle, uh, northern middle Magdalena Valley Basin. In general, we have the pot of haptic source rock, uh, and we are showing the percentage of vitrinite showing and measure and measure areas from early to early oil to late gas window. Uh, for the tablazo formation, we can see we are showing the higher thermal maturity over the 2% of vitrinite. For La Luna formation, we have lower thermal maturity with large generating areas and more prospective zones. After that, we built the play fairway maps for each in, uh, generating interval. La Luna formation is the first. So for all the maps, we have two different kinds of prospectivity areas. Uh, as Gustavo shows, uh, we have the first related to wedging the units to the west of the basin, and the second one is related to structural traps. This is about uh, the tectonostratigraphic evolution to the center and the east part of the basin. From Yarigui Cantagallo field, uh, passing through this Kirama field until Norian field, in the north of the basin, we can see the zone with uh, structural traps. Uh, after that, we built two the, fair, the play fair we maps for Lizama formation. Uh, Lizama formation is very important because it's an exploratory target in this moment. So we have the migration flow paths in this picture. Uh, we can see they are oriented to the west boundary of the basin, and we can see an, a structural zone where a coordinator field is located. For Lisama formation, we have a good overburden section in Maastrichtian and Paleocene that results in early expulsion processes in the depot centers at the same time the traps were forming. So Lisama formation has a pretty good scenario in order of effectivity in the petroleum system. The play fairway maps for Esmeralda formation is the most, um, as you can see, the most important migration flow paths is oriented from southeast to northwest. And this reservoir shows some migration flow paths in the east border in this part of the reservoir. So at the top of Esmeralda formation, we have combined traps uh, similar to the traps in Palagua field located in the southern middle Magdalena Valley Basin. And we have here two prospectivity zones with structural traps with a stratigraphic component too. Uh, 
we have the play fairway maps and unexplored sectors for this part of Northern Middle Magdalena Valley Basin. Unexplored sectors by definition are, are areas where we don't have wells. So we summarize all the play fairway maps for La Luna Formation, Lizama Formation and Esmeraldas Formation and that allow us visualize the places what would have the greatest prospectivity in the Northern Middle Magdalena Valley Basin. So this map shows the stacking of all play fairway maps, including combined traps to the west part and areas with a predominance of structural traps to the east. So uh, we stack all the reservoirs, La Luna, Lizama and Esmeralda's formation. Uh, for Cesar Man Rancheria basins, we we use the same methodology for Northern Middle Magdalena Valley Basin. And we have here the thermal maturity for Lagunitas and La Luna formations. In the Cesar Basin, we have uh, for Lagunitas and La Luna uh, from early oil window to late gas window. For Rancheria Basin, we have two La Lagunitas formations and La Luna formation. And we can see the Lagunitas formation has a higher maturity level than the Luna formation, which shows early to late oil, oil window. Play fairway maps for Cesar Basin uh, at the top of Lagunitas formation. Lagunitas formation is the most important level because has less exhumation and is linked to Cesar fault system where migration flow paths are located. We can see two prospectivity areas with important oil shows and there are areas with good depths to explore. For Rancheria Basin, we have the play fairway maps. Uh, I have to say for the Neogene and Paleogene reservoirs in this part of the Rancheria Basin are exhumated. For this reason, we don't have these prospectivity maps. Therefore, Lagunitas formation is the most important level because has less exhumation than the others. For Lagunitas and La Luna formations, the oil shows are small, less than 5 million barrels of oil equivalent. After that, we calculate the jet to find uh, using three methodologies, screaming curve, fractal analysis, and mass balance. But first, I have to talk about problem place. In this part of the Northern Middle Magdalena Valley Basin, we have three kinds of problem place. The first is oil production trend, Yarigui, Cantagallo, Santa Lucia, Tisquirama, with 80% of oil reserves. Uh, at second, I, I have, we have fault closure anticline with 13% of oil reserves. Found in this part of the basin, the reservoirs are Rosa Blanca and Lizama. Uh, and the third, the third is structural and stratigraphic play with 6% of oil reserves in this part of the basin. So for jet to find a uh, creaming cure, we can see in the northern sector of the basin, uh, we have 40 oil fields that have been discovered. The largest field in this basin is Yarigui Cantagallo field with 1,077 million barrels of oil equivalent. The original oil in place for entire area of the basin are 2,763 million barrels of oil equivalent. So we separate the exploratory history for middle, for Northern Middle Magdalena Valley Basin in four stages. The first stage with 12 fields, uh, begins with Yarigui Cantagallo field, and this is the greatest contribution to the oil in place in the basin. The, the second stage begins with the discovery of San Roque field in the early 60s until 2012 with the discovery of Juglar field. After that, the, stage, the third stage begins with the discovery of Tronos field in 2012 until Caramelo and La Estancia fields in 2015. In this stage of the, of the exploration, a medium and a small size fields were discovered. 
And at the end, finally, uh, the fourth stage begins with the discovery of Boranda Field in 2017, Ayombero Field, and Flamencos Field in 2019. So the exploratory trend allows us to propose potential resources to discover in the next 20 years about 1,000 million barrels of oil equivalent. To fractal, uh, for fractal analysis prognosis uh, from the current distribution of the oil in place, the parabolic fractal methodology was applied, uh, making a prognosis of the number and size of additional fields that would allow completing this distribution. We achieve a data correlation uh, close to 100%. Additional, we use the application of Pareto's law for the prognosis that 80% of the oil in place would be found in the 20% of the fields. That is a Pareto, an ideal Pareto about 80, 20. So uh, we have 14 fields to discover with an oil in place about 4,045 million barrels of oil equivalents. But also we have three fields to discover between 500 and 1,000 million barrels of oil equivalent. One of the fields with eight, more than 800 million barrels of oil, of oil equivalents. So this the, is the second field in size in the basin. But we have to one, uh, between 100 and 500 uh, million barrels of oil equivalents, eight more fields, and two more fields uh, with an oil in place between 15 and 150 and 100 million barrels of oil equivalent. At the end, we have between five and 10 million barrels of oil equivalent, one more field. In total, 14 fields to discover. For Mars balance, for the methodology of Mars balance in North Middle Valley Magdalena Basin, uh, we have the pot. Uh, of optic source rock named Santa Lucia pod uh, were calculated based on petroleum system 3D modeling. We compiled all the information and are showing uh, two intervals about Tablazo and La Luna formation. Uh, we calculate the area for this pod and for Tablazo formation, is about 4,750 square kilometers, and for La Luna formation is about 4,400 square kilometers. After that, we present the results, but the level of certainty for the different variables used in the mass balance vary between known and hypothetical data. The input data to calculate these resulting values were known data about pot of optic source rock area, thickness of source rock, original TOC, source rock density, API gravity, original hydrogen index, and hypothetical data about current hydro hydrogen index, percentage of expulsion efficiency factor, and percentage of lost hydrocarbons during the migration. At the end, for non and middle Magdalena Valley Basin, we have prospective resources in oil in place about 7,787 million barrels of oil equivalents. And if we apply 25% of recovery factor, we have 1,947 million barrels of oil equivalent for non and middle Magdalena Valley Basin. Also, for Cesar Rancheria Basin, we use the same methodology. Uh, in this basin, we only have one discovery field named Compi. So we don't have enough information to do a fractal prognosis. We evaluate two pod of haptic soil rocks areas, one in Cesar and one area in Rancheria Basin, both with two intervals, La Luna and Lagunitas Aguas Blancas formation. So in Cesar Basin, La Luna Formation has an area about 1,280 square kilometers. And for Lagunitas Aguas Blancas Formation, we have 2,600 square kilometers. For Rancheria Basin, we have at La Luna Formations an area about 
450 square kilometers and for Lagunitas for Agua Blanca's formation, we have 850 square kilometers. The results for Cesar Rancheria Basins, uh, we applied the same methodology to calculate the prospective resources that Northern Middle Magdalena Valley Basin, excepting the pod of haptic source rock area, which in this case is hypothetical data. So the prospective resources for Cesar Basin are about 884 million barrels of oil equivalent, and for Rancheria Basin are about 211 million barrels of oil equivalent. In total, for Cesar Rancheria, we have in oil in place 1,096 million barrels of oil equivalent. If we apply 25% of recovery factor, we have for Cesar Basin, 221 million barrels of oil equivalent, and for Rancheria Basin, we have 53 million barrels of oil equivalent. In total, for uh, in total, 274 million barrels of oil equivalent. To summarize the results for prospective resources about oil in place for Northern Middle Magdalena Valley Basin by premium curve. The projection for the next 20 years are about prospective resources, 1,000 million barrels of oil equivalents. By fractal method, we have a prognosis uh, with a correlation coefficient about uh, 98%. We have prospective resources about uh, 4,045 million barrels of oil equivalents. And by ma mass balance method, we have the Santa Lucia pod of haptic source rock for Tablazo and La Luna formation showing prospective resources about 7,787 million barrels of oil equivalents. For Cesar Rancheria, we only have for methodology mass balance. Methodology, we have pod of haptic source rock uh, for Lagunitas Aguas Blancas and La Luna's formation uh, about prospective resources, 1,096 million barrels of oil equivalents. So that's all. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Patty. Thank you very much for your presentation. Very clear. Uh, could you please I mean, I mean, stop sharing the, the screen? Okay, we almost uh, are on time. Uh, is uh, we are going to spend a, a couple of minutes. Uh, are you see my screen? Yes, Enrique. OK, do. thank you. OK, um, as a summary, uh, you can see that still there are a lot of room to find reserves, mainly in the northern part of the middle of Magdalena Valley. However, as also uh, according to the presentation, you see that also there is a lot of opportunities in Cesar Rancheria Basin. It's a matter to get more data more 3D siting acquisition, and of course, some wells in the future uh, in order to uh, increase the prospectivity in, in Cesar uh, Rancheria, and also uh, uh, according to the, the presentation of the, of the whole team, you see a lot of chances for the middle, middle Magdalena Valley in another part. Uh, this slide that you have seen is just to uh, overpose the uh, the uh, fair, fair, fair maps, which are in a, in a dash uh, shapes against the areas uh, of the ANH. I mean, areas in exploration, areas in production, available areas. Uh, I, uh, I mean, all the areas. And uh, you can see, for instance, in this part of the, of the basin, you can see the uh, blocks name BMM 33-1. BMM 33-2 and BMM 27-1 uh, 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 is located just, I mean, uh, I mean the, the, the fairway maps and the, the opportunity just in those blocks. So the idea is that the industry, uh, this presentation encouraged the industry for look for these areas where of course there is one a structural style which predominates, but also there are some other opportunities uh, going, I mean, from, from uh, west 
to east. Finally, and no less important, you also see that all the, the, the facilities in the area are just in the backyard. I mean, so the idea is, guys, let's go for it because there are a lot of opportunities. Um, before to go to the Q&A section, I would like to make an special recognition to the Professor Carlos Julio Rodriguez, a leader of the UPTC, uh, because uh, he, uh, he has a great soul, a lot of initiatives, and he was part of this team. And what um, he's maybe one of the best people that we have met before, and we are now waiting his his recover uh, uh, at this moment. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you, Daniel. I will stop uh, sharing my my screen. Uh, I don't know if the Q and A section start right away. Yes, Enrique, you start uh, right away. And uh, before everyone start asking the questions, if they got any. I'd like to remind to all of you that these presentations this week and last week will be in the page of the ANH. Next week, uh, we haven't uploaded yet because people from communications have, haven't been hired yet. So next week, all of them will be at the ANH webpage for the interest of everyone. So as mentioned, Enrique, we start our Q&A section. So if anyone got any questions, do not hesitate to ask them via a chat. There is a question there, Enrique, by Albert Ordonez. I don't know if you can read it. Okay, maybe Patty can answer. Question is from the geochemical point of view, what is the explanation to change of quality of the oil in Totumal, 25 API gravity, and Buturama, 30, 35 uh, API gravity? Uh, Patty, you have any, any answer for Elber? Okay. Uh, Cesar Mora is also in the chat. The easy explanation is the maturity level of this oil. I don't know if this short and precise answer uh, fulfill the uh, expectations for, for Elber. Okay, next question. If there's any other question, because Cesar has already put his point of view into the chat, I think he's writing the, the rest of the answer. Okay, also uh, Cesar uh, said the following, sorry, the oil for Buturama probably correlate with a tablazo formation. Thank you, Cesar, for, um, for the, in, in order to complement the, your previous. Uh, Manuel Huitrago is asking the- Sorry, the Enrique, uh, I have to say to Elbert, uh, in this part of the, in, for these two areas, we have a combination about the maturity and, um, and in this part of the basin, we have to uh, mix, make mixing oils uh, with a complicated uh, processes about biodegradation to la luna formation. And this is, is um, how I say, we have mixing oils and with a complicated, a complex history of uh, um, Migration and about the biodegradation is very important factor to to have a big difference between uh, API gravity in 
in the oils in this part of the basin. But your chemical uh, explanation, uh, you can consult all the document, all the final inform uh, by ANH of this work. Okay, thank you, Patty. And maybe the following question is also for you. Is there a quantified relationship from Tmax and the RO? I, he says he says in the middle mark, but I suppose in this part of the middle mark, in the northern part. So, Patty, you have an uh, answer for Manuel Pitrago or Cesar? I need, I need Cesar helps. <laughs> okay. Uh, honestly, the whole audience uh, uh, is, is claiming that Patricia will continue in the future in, for these presentations instead of Cesar. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, Cesar, uh, I don't know if you have any, any answer for Manuel regarding the, the question. If, if uh, is, okay. The Cesar answer, yes, Mario Garcia pu publish, publish this. Okay. I don't know, it's okay. Manuel and uh, Albert precise right. It's a long discussion. Thank you for the short answer. Okay, thank you, you, Albert, for participating in these workshops of, of the ANH and the, and the universities that uh, we are been working in the fairway maps in, and in, the, in, in frontier basins. I don't know if there is another question from the, from the people. I don't know, Daniel, if we have still time. It's about 9-11. We try to be very precise. <laughs> okay, I would like to thank all of the people, the attendees and the panelists. Thank to all of the group in uh, in representation from the UPTC. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have any any time, and the discussion, as mentioned in the chat, could be quite long. So thank you to Cesar, Germán, Gustavo, Helman, to Patricia, and of course Enrique for this presentation. And see you all of you next week into the presentation from the University of Caldas. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, all the all the guys attending this meeting. Thank you very thank much. You, thank nice, you, Daniel. Have a nice weekend. Bye, guys. Thank you. Same for you. Bye, team. Congratulations. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.